Okay, we are here in one of the dressing rooms in Healy Park with Tyrone, GA coaching officer, but more importantly, friend of the pod, Golf Weekly, uh, fully paid subscriber, Damien Harvey. How are you getting on? Absolutely, and uh, it's, um, I'm looking forward to the new deal on the, the pod for next year. I hear, I hear it's very, going to be very, very competitive. Um, I'm a wee bit worried that Nathan uh, isn't going to make the cut, but given the fact that he's... Uh, he declared a handicap of about 29 or something the other day. So uh, once he's down to you know mid-teens, we'll maybe, we'll maybe get him out in a, one of these big big competitions. Uh, between Mayo and Tyrone, Nathan Murphy has come up in conversation so much. So I think we've uh, stroked his ego enough. We do want to talk to you about this Tyrone team. For a lot of people on the outside looking in, Damien, this is uh, a team that have kind of come from nowhere. But from the inside looking in, I presume, you saw this coming. Oh, I think it's fair to say that obviously with the change in management, um, the expectation levels would have been there, hopefully to win an Ulster Championship in the near future. Um, they've done that in year one, um, and this is very much seen as a brand new project within their own. Uh, so it's, it's brilliant to get it was brilliant to get the Ulster Championship, um, brilliant to retain status in Division One, but to get to an All Ireland final, I think it was probably beyond expectations actually this year. Uh, given the fact that these guys are the, the management team were just are, are on the scene, um, but obviously the lads have fully bought into it, and um, yeah, all Ireland final, and it's, it's it's a brilliant occasion and a a, a real fillip for the whole for the whole county. What is your strategy from a coaching officer's standpoint then to ensure that this is the beginning of something? Well, I suppose <laughs> that would have, it's 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 unending because because uh, obviously we're looking at. What we're going to be trying to do with our academy teams this this winter, um, try to get them up and running. Obviously, we we'll give we give a lot of time to the clubs this year, and uh, we didn't take out uh, any of the of the lads underage lads this year at all, bar from the bar the true minors. So we we'll definitely be looking at a strategy over the winter to try and get the academies back up and running again. And uh, but obviously, there's a few things we need to put in place structurally. Um, and probably financially, in order to make that happen. People think there's an unending um, conveyor belt of, of talent in Tyrone. But that's not always the case. You have to work really, really hard, as we've seen other counties do. Um, and, you know, none more so than us, because it's all right having a team in the All-Ireland final, but there has to be another generation coming behind it, or else you're going to be in the doldrums for a while after. Can you try and explain how you manage to ensure that? What, what are the practical steps you take to try and ensure that there is a generation coming behind us? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with the quality of coaching that you put in um, and the calibre of people that you, you have involved. Um, Academy Tyrone, uh, under the sort of new restructure a few years ago, put really good quality people in. Some of them have drifted away. And it's important that we look for you know another, uh, or some of the same guys actually to return. I know that there's conversations ongoing around that at the minute. Uh, and we want to try and attract a really high calibre of coach back into the system and that means some of those are ex-county men um, and some of them are just really, really good coaches uh, and um, that's, that's what it's about, it's about making sure that the clubs, when they look at the coaching that's available in the Tyrone GA, realise that it's a higher calibre than, you know, as high a calibre as possible uh, and if you can do that and you can put that structure in place, you've got a chance. That's really interesting because that is a theme that a lot of counties are grappling with at the moment, the idea of appointing external managers. There's sort of an instant gratification element to it. Sometimes it leads to real success. Is there a real case to be made, though, that trying to appoint coaches from within the system does lead to longer-term benefits? Absolutely. It has to. It has to. You, see, you see the current Tyrone setup at the minute. You know, you have the likes of Collie Holmes, Joe McBohan in the background, helping out with Fergal and, and Brian. Uh, and you know that that's what it's all about. Peter Donnelly, ex county player as well, involved in the strength and condition, doing an absolutely superb job. Uh, and that's the quality that you you want involved. And uh, I suppose when the clubs in Tyrone see that, and when the young players see that, then that's what it's about. It, you know, going external is the easy route. But I know a number of counties, you know, feel that they have to do that to get themselves up the ladder. But here in Tyrone, it's about trying to develop from within, and we know that there's enough quality players who have taken the jersey, got out onto the field, and, and done it in the past. And who better to learn from than, than those guys? That's what it's all about. The thing is, there's obviously only one senior manager's job. When people like Ryan McMenamin or Peter Canavan are coaching, as I don't want to just pick out for man managers here, but they're the two that, that, that come to mind. Do you 
try and tap into what they're learning from another county? Do you, do you make long-term uh, appeals to them to try and come back within the folder? Or how, how does that dynamic work? Absolutely, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to attract these guys back into the system again. But obviously they need to see that there's a, that there's a longer-term structure in place and that there's opportunities to go in and maybe take an academy team and develop into maybe take a, a throw minor team, under-21 team, and maybe, maybe someday take the senior team as well. They need to be able to see that. And uh, maybe we haven't been as good as we could have been with that in the past. Um, and certainly, just, I say, before you can attract that quality of coach, you need to have ensure there's a system in place. We're grappling a wee bit of that at the minute, um, and we we'll have to get we we'll have to get that right. Once we get that right, we will have a chance, and then we can start, you know, looking at the next generation coming behind. Obviously, good good strides made in the last couple of years in terms of getting the throne throne winners into an All Ireland final this year again, which was a very important step for us. Um, and the fact under 21s won the, the Ulster Championship recently not two distance past either. So those, those are really, really important building blocks and, and building stones for the future. Uh, and that's, I say, that's what we're trying to achieve. But uh, we just, we're, we're, we're grappling to make sure that we get, these, we get these boys recycled back into the system because we want them going out to, we're more than happy for them to go out to other counties for a while, but we need them here, we need them back. And we're, we're mad keen to get them back. Yeah, and I don't know, there's no shame in saying that either. People sometimes dance around that subject, and I think it's pretty obvious that people would love all these greats of the game to come back. It's interesting that you mentioned the, the underage success. Saturday is the 2015 Under-21 Champions against the 2016 Under-21 Champions, so Mayo and Tyrone, there's a similarity there in terms of bringing that generation through. Is there anything you've learned down through the years in terms of stuff that works and stuff that doesn't work when you're taking through a crop of talented youngsters? Well, I don't think you can look for immediate success with them. Uh, Obviously, even from the way they've changed the minor system, a lot of people disagree with, and I disagree with myself. The fact that it's under 17, um, it's the, the step up from 17 to maybe even 20, to under 20, and certainly into senior, you don't make that step anymore. Very rarely do you see a 17-year-old step into a senior jersey at 18 years of age. Um, so that 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 dynamic, or that getting that pre- preparation of a senior team does take time to develop and you're only seeing these guys really start to come together now. It's taken probably six years, you know, since that since that All Ireland title. Um, but now you're seeing a very mature and developed footballer and you know there's another generation coming pushing at their heels as well. Um, uh, and you know, like Connor McKenna coming back in from Australia is a massive uh, a boost for the county as well. Delighted to see him. The fact that Cahill McShane opted against going to Australia to play for Throne shows you that the you know the esteem in which that county jersey does still hold for, for our players. And uh, it, I think it's incumbent upon everybody that's involved in any county board, or, or particularly our own county board, to try and do everything they can to work to keep these lads you know, still at that same level. Because I think sometimes we can take it for granted, but the amount of workload that those guys have to go through you know, to get to play at this level is, uh, is really, really, it's, it's hard work. And we have to be as supportive as possible. Can I ask then, out of curiosity, uh, Fergal Logan and, uh, and Brian Dewher, how much autonomy do they have in terms of overhauling the system, bringing in coaches? Do, do they have final say on everything? Because again, if you're looking at other counties, we often hear stories of county boards imposing what they want on a, on a management. No, Fergal Logan and Brian Dewher are appointed, and it's their job to put the structures in place that they need to, to, to deliver for Tyrone. And, um, you know, I think the county board try and stay out of it as much as possible, but uh, I'm sure then when the, f- the finance sheets are looked at, there, there may be people with other opinions, but um, ultimately it's the job of the Throne senior management team to put the structure in place around them that's, that's required to deliver. And uh, that's what Fergal and Logan and uh, Brian Dewhurst seem to have done what they have done at this stage because they've got us through to all Ireland final. And as far as we're concerned, it's bonus territory. When it comes to centre of excellences, then I think Garvahi is probably the most famous one uh, in the country. I don't know why that is, but it's a phenomenal facility. There's no question about that. How do you utilise that to the, to the best of its ability, and how do you ensure that you get the best out of your coaches with that sort of facility? Well, it is. It's a remarkable facility, and it's taken a lot of hard effort and work and a good bit of vision to try and get it put in place. Um, I suppose and a, a lot of uh, that credit must go to our fundraising committee, uh, Club Throne Fundraising Committee, who have gone out and lifted significant sums of money uh, from people all around the world, um, Tyrone people uh, who, have, who have put their hands in their pockets and have supported Tyrone GA and put that building and put that 
facility in place, but I suppose the really important thing is that everybody feels a buy into, into it, and I think sometimes sometimes people can look at it and say, well, that's just not for me, it, it's, you know, it doesn't, it's not my part of the GA or it doesn't feel like my part of the GA, so there's a body of work, again, we need to do from, from our perspective to make people realise that that facility that's at Girahi is for everyone, not just the, the, the extraordinary player, it's for, every, for all our players, and there's work to be done, there's no doubt uh, about that. Um, but in the meantime, you know, we have, a, have an excellent facility up there that we can take our county teams. And this year, thankfully, uh, we've, uh, it was passed that, uh, earlier in the year that the, the ladies and uh, Camogues now you, you also use that facility free of charge, which is fantastic. And in this age of equality, that's exactly what you want. Do club teams get in there, like pre-COVID? Uh, no, the club teams, some club teams would have been using it just as a facility to maybe train pre-season and so on, but uh, in the main it's, it's mainly a county facility uh, and you know, we should be able to, we should be opening it up to more, to more people. Um, that's, again, that's something that has to be, has to be tackled and, 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 and sorted out because uh, we do want to open it up as much as possible and I suppose whenever people are coming up with dropping off kids for academy teams and so on, we want them to feel as, as you know that that's that's their building and it is their building. It's not it's not a it's not a management committee or a Tyrone GA county committee building. It's the, it's a building for the Gales of Tyrone and uh, and and Ulster uh, and in in terms of a wider use because obviously we want it to be used for our schools or, or Ulster schools competitions as well. Very interesting. Well, Damien, you know, it's great chatting to you. Do you think Tyrone are going to do it on, on Saturday? Ach, listen, um, I was listening to your conversations last week about the, the power rankings and I know Jerry Gilroy was on having a chat with you as well trying to convince you that uh, never listen to Jerry Gilroy's rule number one that Tyrone should probably be a little higher than fourth and Kerry been second um, you know what we're just delighted to be there and uh, she will see how it goes they might even be up to number one if they win on Saturday do you know what? I have a feeling I'll never be number one with you, Owen, but uh, sure, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, and, uh, Jerry, you're right. Uh, I think uh, Trone GA, Trone, uh, definitely team of, the, team of the naughties, team of the decade. <laughs> we will not open that can of worms right now because I want to get out of here alive. Uh, great to chat to you, Damien. Thanks a million. All the best. Thanks.